Welcome to one of our training videos. This training video is going to give the sequence of play for the game. The sequence of play is an important skill set that's required of players because it governs the movement of units, when they move, how they move, how units fire, how units interact with each other in shock combat, command control, things of that nature. So it is a skill set that does require some mastery by the gamers. With that being said, I'm going to go into the actual sequence of play for an example here and go through a complete game turn. Now the first thing that needs to be determined is, you know, is there needs to be who's going to be side one and side two. And for today's training video, I'm determining the side one as being the army of Baden, here on your left side, and side two to be the army of Berg, which is on your right side. Now the sequence of play composed of two eight-step phases or segments done twice for a complete game turn. And they basically mirror each other, these two eight-set groups. And you'll see that as we go through the sequence of play on this side of the card, and I'll flip it over to the back side, which will continue with the other eight steps. That being said, we start off with phase one of the first segment, which is the mutual MFP phase. This is the morale fatigue point phase, which is basically an accounting phase where all the prior turns losses and hourly turns to see if the, what the command costs for the unit's present command orders. Step two is the declare cavalry charge phase for the bottom sides of the fence. There, if they had a cavalry unit out here someplace and they were in a position that they wanted to call a charge, they would call the charge after doing a morale check. And if successful, the Bergy inside will take the required morale check rolls for charging cavalry. That's the only step that what the Berg is going to do here is to check the morale for the charging cavalry. Once you've completed step two, we go on to step three, which is the rally phase. Only the Bodner forces are going to be performing the rallying actions, and this is basically where you have units in a case of morale disorder or in a state of rout. And if so, you would change the units in morale disorder, if possible, into good order, and if they're actually in a state of rout, take a morale check and change them into a state of morale disorder. Keep in mind there's three stages of morale in the game, good, morale disorder, and a state of rout. Notice that the Bergian forces actually perform no actions here at this point in time. Usually it's a good time for the player, to, the Bergian player, to be thinking of what he wants to do in his upcoming movement phase, especially if you're playing timed moves. Step four is the actual movement phase. And all the Baden forces are going to do during the movement phase is they'll be watching the Bergian units move, and if they happen to come within the charge angle of four-inch arc of a cavalry unit, they might want to do an elected opportunity charge, which will come down in the forthcoming shock phase. They have to be on the lookout for that, and please refer to the shock combat rules and when to take morale checks segments of videos for more information on that. Otherwise, it will be the time or turn for the Bergian forces to actually perform their movement. Now, the movement is based upon two major components segments. The first segment, of course, is you do all your facing and formation changes for the units. This is where you're going to change the unit into column from line or column into square, go out into open order, limber up a battery, unlimber a battery, things of that nature. You would perform all those actions, including facings, before you move your units. Now, it's quite common for players to actually perform a facing or maneuvering change on a unit and then actually move the unit forward and then proceed to the next unit. That's perfectly fine in most circumstances. The only time it really comes into play is if the units are so close together or so densely packed that there is no room actually to perform that unit from line into square or square out into line and things of that nature because you would interdisperse or interpenetrate another unit. If you so elect to do it, then both units automatically become morale disorder for the remainder of this half of the game turn. So for example, I'm going to pan the camera here over towards the Bergs and we're going to do a couple of quick little changes here. I'm going to take this end unit here, and we're going to take it from a linear formation, single rank depth, and I'm going to form a column with it. And basically, to make a proper column, you've got to have more figures in the rear ranks than you're going to have in the front rank. So here I've got four figures in the rear ranks compared to two figures in the front rank. This is, by definition, a proper column, and we'll use column or movement rates. If I wanted to put it into a double rank line type formation, three ranks three figures wide, two ranks deep, like so, perfectly fine. The difference here is this is not considered a proper column and therefore will move at linear movement rate. You got three figures in the front, three figures in the rear. If I wanted to form it into a square, 
just turn the figures around so they're facing in an outwards direction, hopefully in all directions, but it's quite common just to get a four-to-back type arrangement. If there's ever any doubt that the square is a formation, by the looks of the figures, always define it to your opposite player. Otherwise, I'm going to leave this unit in, in a column formation, because we will be moving it forward in the next coming segment here. Also during the facing and formation segment, this is where you limber up your artillery batteries. So you just spin the battery around, have the gun or cannon facing away from the enemy. If I wanted to change this unit's facing to have it facing in a rearward direction, this is where I would also be doing that action. And once you've done all your facing and formation changes is when you actually move the units. Now in this particular case, I'm going to bring this column forward down the road here. and We're going to go into a shock combat mode against this open order screen that's in front of the Baden forces. This gun is already limbered up. It's going to struggle forward a couple inches and then unlimber. And artillery is unique in that it has the ability to mo move forward a distance and then unlimber the guns and be in preparatory position to fire in the upcoming mutual artillery fire phase. If they so do it, it'll cost them two inches of their actual base movement to do it. And in this case, for this last line battalion, I'm just going to do a little bit of a wheel here because we're so wide, we're more than an inch and a half wide, or three figures, and they're just going to march forward up and stay up alongside the gun here. And that concludes the Baden, or in this case, the Berg movement phase. And once you've concluded the movement phase, you come up to the command phase. This is where your atta attached officers would theoretically could detach. You can move an officer to attach it to a unit, or move an officer to change his position so he's got a better radius value or radius area of influence on the battlefield. And notice both sides actually perform this phase. It's common to both sides. Bring the camera back. Again, the command phase, as you can see, is common to both sides. That being said, we go up to the shock phase. Now, the shock phase has got two halves. It's got on, it's under both columns, as you can see, but the difference is under side two, the only shock combat that they're going to perform during this shock phase is countercharging cavalry. So if they had some reason they've got cavalry that's in a state of countercharge, they're going to be able to move it forward and impact enemy units directly through the front and, in, and conduct shock combat. Same thing, this would be also when if there was an actual charging cavalry unit, it would be moved forward and impacted the defending unit based upon the shock combat rules. Otherwise, just as a, as a game note, this column of infantry is still struggling its way forward towards this screen to perform its shock combat. And there's one key thing to keep in mind in this game. Generally, as a general rule, will always, before they can cause a shock combat or any action against an enemy unit, the other enemy unit is, is going to have the opportunity to react or change its formation or change its facing with penalties, of course, before the actual shock combat would come down. It's sort of a representative. While this infantry is trucking its way forward, this skirmisher screen is thinking about maybe retiring behind the firing line back here. And that's what the game is really trying to represent. It's not a case of this column is running forward, impacting and chasing them away. It's while they were trucking their way forward, their reactional move is to bring them behind the line here. And the penalty would be, if they do elect to do that, would be an opportunity to fire from these front two figures. Again, check your firepower rules here and zones of control rule videotapements for more information.